generally speaking, uh, Malaysia has been targeting um, Indonesia for, for, for uh, services here in medical. Uh, but Malaysia Healthcare looks further than that because we don't see um, this continuing. Uh, the healthcare services in Indonesia will uh, improve, and soon uh, other markets will be required, you know, um, as potential for Malaysia. So what we are doing is we're promoting Malaysia in destinations uh, in the West. For example, in the U.S. now, we find uh, a lot of uh, Americans are already uh, aware of the uh, services here, where you have the same type of equipment. Uh, the physicians are trained. American board trained in the UK, they're trained Australia, New Zealand, and we are JCI accredited as well as MSQH accredited. We have everything that you could actually have in the US or in Europe for a fraction of the price. Thailand has branded itself uh, globally. Um, they have had a head start over us, uh, just like I would say Singapore has, but that doesn't mean that Malaysia doesn't have an opportunity to be in the same uh, uh, market and uh, brand itself in the area of medical tourism. Um, we have embarked, as I said before, in the area of technologies. Today, um, what we have is um, we provide the entire end-to-end -end services. In other words, before you come to Malaysia, we pre-screen you. We have our own physicians on board. I'm not a doctor. I don't play doctor. So if there is a query, it goes to one of our medical advisors who are actual doctors in their various uh, specialties. So let's say, for example, if you have an orthopedic query, you have a knee replacement, etc., you'll be communicating with our orthopedic uh, specialists. And uh, before you come, we will be able to assess whether you should come. And when you come, all, all the uh, requirements will be already taken care of. Um, also, once you've had your services here, we provide the entire services of picking you up at the airport, booking your, uh, your, uh, your hotels, making your appointments, um, having a destination manager be with you, hold your hand right through your services if you need it. And more important is post Malaysia. What happens when you go back? Uh, unlike our competitors where suddenly when you're put back on a plane and we don't hear from you, what we do is we have what a medical device, as I said before, that enables you to carry your own health information in the format of a card. And here you could store your echocardiograms, your medications, your x-rays, everything in this card, and it's fully digitized, HIPAA compliant in the U.S. because it's IP'd in the U.S. And now you can follow up with your care back in your home country, and with a click of a button, it goes into German, French, Spanish, Mandarin, Arabic, all the major languages, so you can, you can have um, treatment to be followed up after you leave Malaysia. We have also embarked in the area of remote health monitoring. In other words, governments are now suddenly realizing they need to manage um, people from only the critical patients should be coming to uh, for services. In other words, if you can be treated in your home, for example, for sugar levels, um, for uh, blood pressure, and you can now transmit that data you know, remotely from your home to your provider, you don't need to come and take the day off and, and stand in a line just to get care. And the reason for that is because of the aging population that's happening. The baby boomers who are turning you know, 60 and above over the next decade or two are going to uh, flood the hospitals. So governments are now becoming more and more varied. And because of that, we have partners we have partners abroad that we're doing pilots and we've got uh, GTG governments who are working with us and primarily because of the card that we have. When the tsunami hit Japan, 50 million people didn't have access to, the ele to electricity or the internet. So what good is your health records doing online in, a, in, in an emergency? So we find that there is space for now. I mean, this will probably, you know, one day when the world is fully connected, you won't need it. But for now, there is, an op you know, there is a space to use this card. So we have these pilots going on in different countries. And what we see is um, this will enhance medical tourism. Because if you talk about being able to tell people we have embarked on projects and pilots like this to the level of working with governments, it does prove the fact that we have uh, ra risen the level of uh, health care. And that's going to interest patients to come to Malaysia. The numbers are increasing, about 25% on an 
annual basis. But what I do see is that emerging markets are also coming into the fray. You look at Taiwan, you look at the Philippines, they're all jumping into the uh, bandwagon because they see an opportunity. Uh, Malaysia has to be a little more aggressive in its uh, uh, marketing uh, of its healthcare services and I think get the name out. Um, I think we've got a MHTC um, is doing a good job as well as the Prime Minister himself is uh, championing the whole uh, exercise of promoting Malaysia. But I do believe that there needs to be a more target uh, approach. In other words, medical tourism, uh, I don't know whether it's the right term. Uh, I would say because medical is more for people who need medical attention in a hospital environment. When you talk about wellness, you talk about people like you and me who don't need that but still want to now prevent ourselves from getting ill. So looking at areas where you talk about alternative medicines, you talk about massages, you talk about uh, stress relief, you talk about Ayurvedic uh, medicine, you talk about the Chinese uh, you know, acupuncture and things like that. Um, though non-scientific have been proven for centuries.